Welcome back, guys. Straight from the nest. It's 1914 World War One Wars of the World. We're going to go ahead and get ourselves started here with a intro and then the first round. See you at the end. Hello, everybody. This is NATO at the nest, and this is uh, got a channel announcement. Uh, we're going to have a slight change to the World War One scenario. It's not a slight change; it's a big change. Uh, we're still going to do it. Uh, we're just to uh, going to change the scenery. Um, if you're wondering what this big green logo thing staring in front of you is, the change is we're going to change maps. We we're lucky enough to get a prototype map from Historical Board Gaming because they are working on a World War One scenario as well. And Historical Board Gaming was kind enough to send us the prototype map so that we could play and showcase it. Now I need to stress that this is a prototype map. The game is very much still in development so this is not the final product. So this map is subject to change. But even in its prototype phase, uh, I think it is a very good map. Uh, so, uh, enough yak, and I'll just show it to you. This is the. Um, sorry for my sniffling, I'm actually coming down with a cold right now, so. But this is the 1914 map from Historical Board Gaming. Um, as, it, as it is currently, like I said, it's still in development phase, so this is not the finished product by any means whatsoever. And uh, when the time comes and I'm able to, we can go into some of the details about the map. But for now, uh, I can't really say I can't really say much. Other, you know, I'm pretty much. Um, I'm allowed to play my scenario on uh, historical war games map. Uh, I can't go into any of the rules right uh, at the moment, uh, so it'll be uh, Viper and I's scenario, not historical board gaming scenario. Uh, like I said, I can't go into um, any of the historical board gaming's rules, so don't bother asking. I can't tell you. So these are just. Some of the proposed features of the new map. Yeah, so it's ha hasn't got all the artwork on it yet, but that's coming. And uh, so, what in terms of Viper and I's? Um, World War One scenario. Like we, if you've been watching, we've already we're already one turn into it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to reset and start over and play it on this map. So that was it. That was the announcement. So with that, we'll put the pieces back on the board and we'll start again with the fall of 1911. See you then. Hi guys, welcome back to The Nest. Um, just a little recap on the intro video and my little snippet from earlier. Um, we do have a restart. Um, Doug and Will, uh, who work with Historical Board Gaming, were very generous to send us a protege um, prototype map. Um, again, we cannot be more adamantly clear that this map is not for sale. We are only playtesting it. Um, just so you have a good idea they're still building it uh, to make sure that things are historically correct uh, that play pieces are going to be able to work with it um, with the manpower and lots of other stuff that go with it we're not really going to go into a lot of detail on um, their version of the World War One as much as we are just going to actually play our version on the game with that also um, if you don't already have them we're going to do a little zoom in here. They do have different types of dice for sale. I, for one, I actually collect dice. So um, you can get the blue and the gray, which uh, you guys saw in the Civil War. That's the ones that I use. Um, they have green and dark green and light purple, um, the light blue that come in these cases like this for 16 millimeters. 
And then for 12 millimeter dies, you can also get those as well. Um, I, like I said, I for one actually collect dice, so you guys can see that um, all the colors of the world, Farkle dice, regular dice, D12s, D6s, all over the place. So that is one thing that if you do have um, a particular color that you would like, uh, check it out on historicalboardgaming.com. Uh, they have many, many different colors, ivory, white, black, red, you name it, they've got it. It's right there on the site. So with the new board, um, in addition to that, changes a few things on how we set up some stuff, which is one of the reasons why we had to actually do a full restart. Um, NATO did the small intro and just showed you guys the actual map without any pieces on it. We're going to go to the map now because we have already played our first round and we're going to show you guys some of those changes now. Um, but we're going to start over here in the western United States and work our way um, to the west to the other side of the board. So let's get in here. You guys can see that the not a lot has really changed here in the western U.S. Uh, Mexico is still Mexico. San Francisco is still San Francisco. Um, I have one Rebel Mexican here because that's what I got and something that we did change on that I do recall that we said it in the last round is that um, instead of us rolling to see how many infantry we're going to get a 1 to 3 you don't get any 4, 5, and 6 you do get 1 1 and that's for both sides of Mexico I got 1, NATO got 1 and his side is still contested we also got a bunch of militia pieces, so no more pink chips on the board, which is totally okay with me because I am not a pink person by any means. Uh, so everywhere that were, there was a pink chip is now an actual militia chip. Um, Germany moved their ships down, um, and Australia moved one of theirs up here. The Chinese War went differently this time. Uh, the Qing Dynasty actually won. Um, not that it really matters, it's more of something to do during the game because in uh, later on in the 20s, uh, the Mao and uh, other Chinese revolt and then we have CCP and KMT China come into play for World War II. Uh, moving over into Africa and um, the Ottomans, you guys remember last time it seriously went differently than I thought it was going to. Uh, this time it went historically accurate. Um, I did lose both of my cruisers up against the Italian fleet, but fortunately I damaged NATO's Italian dreadnought and it is going to cost him five IPPs to repair that. That is on a roll of a D6. So you have to roll it to see how much it's going to cost to repair it. And um, he did not have the IPPs to repair it. He also took Tripoli. I still have Kufra. But um, that can change the next round because I do have my militia and my infantry here and he's got cavalry coming over. <coughs> uh, moving up, I placed a artillery and an infantry here in um, Constantinople. And with my um, Austria, I put in a, another infantry um, and another artillery up here because I don't actually have a lot. But you can see that Austria instead of us having the layover here, I'm going to turn that light back on so we can see. Um, with the other map we use the layover piece that goes right on top so it has Serbia and Romania and stuff like that, but this one we don't have to because when you get into here you can actually see Serbia and you can see Bulgaria and Romania and East Hungary and West Hungary and all of this, but all of this area right here belongs to Austria. So that's kind of that's kind of cool that they did that so we have that going on then we have Russia and their pretty little lines here and then we have um, Prussia and Germany well what will be Germany here in this area um, I did place a submarine and I sporadically set out a bunch of stuff I got two fighters um, some more infantry I put a hospital in here in Munich and so we have those going on there. Uh, France built up their front line here and then England comes in and you can see these pieces here. Now these we had to paint, these dreadnoughts, we had to paint these because they were originally 
the tan color, but with the World War I pieces from Axis and Allies from Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, they are not um, tan by any means. They're actually this light olive green color. So we, had, we, we went and found a color that was at least relatively co close to it, and that's what we did. So moving on over here, I did move my submarine out onto the convoy line. Um, America has their transport sitting here, and they have their assorted ships down here on the East Coast. And then, of course, Mexico here. Now, back to the Moroccan crisis, um, I did win that again. So I went up 3 IPP for the rest of the game. Um, I cannot lose those. I uh, did win the influence roll again by one point, um, which seems to happen a lot with us. So that's pretty much what happened with the first round. So the map is really cool. It's really well laid out. Um, again, it's not finished by any means. So and uh, we are going to continue playtesting it. We're going to playtest it through the entire game. So hopefully that's um, something that will work out better uh, than the 1936 map that we have. Hello, princess. Um, so keep that in mind, guys. Uh, we're going to come back with the next round. It is the uh, spring of 1912 for the next round. And we will see you back here very shortly. Uh, any comments about what you think about the map, go ahead and drop those below. We'll make sure that Doug gets, a, um, gets those so that he can get some ideas going on, too. Like it, live it, love it. We'll be right back. Hi, Axis and Allies players, and thanks for watching The Nest. Like what we're doing? Go ahead and hit a squat on that like button. Share it to your favorite social media. Want to see more videos just like this? Go ahead and subscribe. We'll have more coming to you right from original Axis and Allies from Milton Bradley, Axis and Allies of 1914 by Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast, Shapeways.com, and HistoricalBoardGaming.com, where you can find all of your expansions and other pieces right there online ready for you. We'll see you next time right here straight from the nest.